So there was a recent prediction made by Elon Musk that was actually quite shocking in terms of what he predicted for the future of artificial intelligence and AGI. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at that prediction, dissecting it and taking a look at absolutely everything going on. So the prediction that Elon Musk made was that we will have artificial general intelligence at some time in 2025 as a possibility. Now, take a look at this clip because I'm then going to dissect his statement because he not only says AGI by 2025 as a possibility, but he also says some other things as well. Well, when, when things are changing rapidly, the, the ability to predict the future, I think, is uh, becomes a lot harder because of the rate of change is so great. But I think some things are fairly obvious to predict, which is that we'll have AI or AGI that's at a level that it can really do almost any cognitive, I think really not almost, really any cognitive task. It's just a question of when. One could debate, is it, you know, smarter than any human at the end of next year, or is it two years or three years? But it's not more than five years, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, and I give predictions, 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 I'm, I'm sort of saying giving predictions at the 50th percentile of probability. So not, not, not like it will definitely happen, but if you say what, if you ask me like, what's the 50th percentile uh, the, um, where it's like, the, 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 you know, your, your kind of over under is kind of even, that that's where I, why, why, why I, I think it's probably at the next year before AI can do better than any individual human could do. Um, and then, uh, but there's, there's a, it's a, it's a much higher bar to say, well, is this what than um, you, you know human intelligence collectively? Uh, but if the rate of change continues, uh, that, that's why I think probably 2029 or maybe 2030 is where it, it, um, digital intelligence will probably exceed uh, all human intelligence combined. Yeah, that clip was rather fascinating because I think the first half of it, where he you know stops and says that you know all humans. So yeah, I think this was a rather fascinating clip. Elon Musk stating that by next year, 2025, and that is not far away in terms of AI, stating that, you know, we could really get an AI system that is better than every human at every task, you know, or the general level. Uh, and he's, of course, you know, I think even if, let's say, for example, that some people are taking the statement as it's not by next year, and some people are taking the latter part of the statement where he's stating that, you know, it could be within the next four years, three years, what he definitely did say was that it's definitely not going to be five years. And you know, surprisingly, I did see that there was a lot of different comments, you know, to Elon about this on Twitter, which I'll show you guys in a moment. But when in a moment, we also do take a look at, you know, some of the other industry statements by some of the industry leaders, I think you'll find that Elon Musk's statement isn't actually one that is actually shocking anymore. His one is actually pretty, pretty conservative, stating that, you know, we could get AGI by 2025 or 2026 or 2027, which is only three years away and is a really, really short amount of time to conceptualize for the amount of change that would occur in such time, I don't think that that is a surprising statement. What I rather think is surprising is the way that the world will change after this technology is made a reality. Now, he also said something at the end, and he said that, you know, by 2029, that was going to be the stage where we would have, you know, biological compute would exceed all level human equivalent compute. And of course, you know, it would exceed all level of, you know, human intelligence by that time. And 2029, that is, to be honest with you guys, it lines up with what other people are saying as well. And even recently, Sam Altman said in an interview that, you know, he expects expects AGI to be a system that's capable of delivering new research. And that was his definition. And I think that's important to understand because if he's stating that we're going to get there by 2029, that means that far before then, we're going to be getting AI systems that are going to be capable of really, really high level tasks, high level abstraction, high level reasoning, and just doing a whole bunch of different things that are going to really, really shake up many different industries. So that's why this one was getting a lot of attention. Now, there was also some other things. And like I said, this video is going to dive into four of the main statements that Elon Musk has said. And, you know, this is the first one, but I also wanted to include some other stuff as well. So I wanted to include some of the industry insiders, what they think as well. So NVIDIA CEO said that, you know, it's five years away. That would mark it at 2029. That's when he says a AGI is going to be there. Shane Legg uh, from Google DeepMind, the co-founder and chief AGI scientist, the person who coined the term AGI, said that there's a 50% chance that AGI will be developed by 2028. So that's only four years away. And that's a pretty big chance saying that 50% AGI will be in 2028. Um, so that is something that's really fascinating as well. And also, in addition to this, Sam Altman also did recently say that AGI could be reached in sometime in the next four to five years which is rather fascinating. And then, like I said as well, Mustafa Suleiman, now the CEO of uh, Microsoft AI, says that, you know, it's going to be within the next three years um, and stating that, you know, it's, it's really, really possible and will become as ubiquitous as the internet. So um, I think what the important thing here from Elon Musk's first point is that the next three to four years are going to 
you know, really, really be monumental in terms of the amount of societal change that we're going to see, because AI is going to be the backbone of the next, potentially the next economic revolution in terms of what we see in terms of how value is created, how value is distributed. And I think this shouldn't be understated at all, because this is something that is very, very, very important for people to pay attention to, because the ramifications might be good, it might be bad. But um, yeah, the next four years, you know, that kind of system, I think that is going to be a very exponential age. Now, Elon Musk also said something as well. You know, point number two was something that I found to be pretty, pretty fascinating, because this was something that Elon Musk said that, um, you know, it, it just goes to show how crazy things are even exceeding expectations. So point number two was Elon Musk actually discussing the compute and compute is just, you know, things that power AI. And he said that this is just increasing so fast that he, you know, doesn't really understand. Um, and, and most people can't really conceptualize how fast this stuff is moving. So, I mean, I have to give credit to Ray Kurzweil in being actually remarkably um, accurate in his predictions. And in, in fact, if, if anything, like I, I think he was perhaps a bit conservative uh, in his predictions. So I mean, if you look at the amount of, of AI compute and the talent, that they, the sort of human talent that is going into AI and the amount of compute that's going into AI, um, it's, you know, at this point, it's, it's it, it appears to be increasing by a factor of 10, the AI compute, the dedicated AI compute, it appears to be growing by a factor of 10 every six months. You know, like, so it's like, like, basically close to, I'd say almost like a 100x improvement per year, at least for the next few years um, in, in uh, AI compute coming online. And it seems like probably a lot of the, the data centers, maybe most of the data centers that currently do kind of conventional uh, compute will transition to uh, AI compute. So yeah, this is Elon Musk's statement on compute. Now there are actually two parts of the statement and I want to show you the second part because something recently did happen and it was so fascinating to how uh, Elon Musk's statement was reflected in a recent announcement. So like I said before, this is where he's stating that, you know, the amount of compute that's going on is just absolutely insane. He said it's increasing by a fraction of 10x or 100x every year, which is uh, in terms of like the amount of hardware that's coming online to be able to power these AI systems. I don't think he's lying because we are now in that discovery phase of where, you know, the broader population has now realized the true potential of AI. And I think a lot of people are trying to get in on this because they're starting to realize the transformative nature of this technology and how much it will impact everything. And because of that, people are starting to invest more. They're taking it more seriously. Companies like Meta are shifting their entire baseline towards AGI. Other companies are also focusing on the production of that. And there is just so much investment going into this. That means, you know, the, the, the level of compute is increasing fast. Now, in addition to that, because the level of compute is increasing fast, that means that the knock-on effects that are going to be crazy as well. Now, take a look at what Elon Musk says as well here, because this is a crazy, crazy statement that he says. So, so when you have that that level of compute uh, uh, growth, and um, it's it's sort of moves all on steroids next level, it, it, you know, in terms of how much compute is coming online, then you're you're just going to have acceleration that uh, is unprecedented. In fact, I've never seen any technology grow as fast as, as AI. Uh, and I've seen a lot, you know, I've seen things fast, but I've never seen anything this fast. So yeah, him saying that I've never seen anything this fast is pretty, pretty crazy because Elon so, Musk so has been in uh, many different industries and seen a, a whole lot more than I have. But the point is as well, is that you know how Elon Musk was just talking about, you know, compute is increasing fast and how this is just really incredible. This talk was actually recorded before this announcement. So he actually said this before in video is GTC announcement where they announced the Blackwell, which goes to show the, you know, a thousand X AI compute in just eight years, which is pretty, pretty incredible. And considering that we've done a thousand X AI compute in just eight years, how much compute do you think we're going to be able to extract when AI starts improving itself in terms of being able to build more efficient chips and being able to build chips that are more energy efficient, more smaller, more dense, more compact, more efficient in just every single realm. I mean, you know, what will the graph look like? Is it just going to go straight up? Is it going to continue? Um, so NVIDIA, you know, showcasing this and then Elon Musk, you know, just like a month before, because the talk was actually recorded a month before and it's only been released now, but him stating that, you know, compute is increasing so much and then NVIDIA just goes ahead and release this. Uh, this is pretty crazy. I've got to be honest with you guys. This is pretty, pretty crazy. And from what we can see here, this level of compute, um, you know, it does look to be exponential. I mean, you can see 130 flops, 620 flops, 4,000 flops, 20,000 flops. I mean, it's pretty, pretty incredible what we've done with uh, GPT-4 levels of compute. And that's why these next level systems, I mean, if we can extrapolate that out into the future, how much, are, you know, how crazy are these next level AI systems going to be? I think it's very, very hard to conceptualize. And for someone like Elon Musk saying, you know, I've never so seen anything like this, 
Um, it's just a bit of an eye opener because it, it, it leads us to understand that, look, all of these people have been in the game for much longer than any of us have been paying attention to it. And if they've say, if they're pretty much stating that, you know, like we've never seen anything like this, this level of computers is unprecedented. Um, I think it's something that is truly, truly fascinating in terms of what the future is going to look like. Now, Elon Musk also did discuss, you know, statement number four uh, was that Elon Musk also did talk about his percentage to doom. Now, if you don't know what that uh, P Doom phrase means it basically just stands for the probability of doom and it's a name as it suggests it refers to the odds that AI will cause a doomsday scenario and essentially it's just you know a scale that runs from 0 to 100 the higher your score the more you're convinced that AI is not only willing to eliminate humankind but in necessary going to succeed at carrying out the task basically your percentage doom is just a percentage on which you think artificial super intelligence will end humanity due to our inability to control it you know how sometimes we'll ask an AI to do something and it doesn't understand the task and it does something that adversely kills us um, or adversely, you know, we didn't want. That's the percentage. Now he talks about this and I think Elon Musk, you know, this, it shouldn't be understated that Elon Musk has been talking about this for quite some time. This is not the first time he's been, you know, screaming from the rooftops about this since I think as early as 2015, as early as anyone can remember. So it's important to remember that he's still basically stating that this is an issue that does need to be solved. The advent of super intelligence, it, it is actually very difficult to predict what will happen next. So I think there's, you know, there's some chance um, uh, that, it will end humanity. I think that's, you know, like I said, I would probably agree with Jeff Hinton that it's about, um, I don't know, 10 percent or 20 percent or something like that. Um, and then, I, I, you know, I think there's I, I think that the, the probable uh, positive scenario outweighs the negative scenario. It, it's just that there's a it's difficult to predict exactly. Um, but I, I think we are headed for, um, you know, as as I think is the title of uh, your book, Abundant, uh, is the most likely outcome. So yeah, that's where Elon Musk finishes off the statement stating that it could be entering an age of abundance. Um, and this was something that was hard for some people to conceptualize. Obviously, there's many different futures with AI. Um, you know, I've been discussing a lot and I've been planning a lot for the future of AI because I feel like most people aren't really prepared for what's to come, whether this scenario turns out good or whether it turns out to be bad, because we know there's a variety of different problems that could arise from AGI, you know, from companies becoming behemoths, um, you know, from the loss of the meaning crisis to, you know, just just a whole range of things that I generally want to be prepared for. Um, but I think what, what Elon Musk is discussing here is that, of course, you know, the probability of an AI, you know, uh, going rogue and, you know, killing humanity is not zero percent. Now, there were also some other important, you know, P doom statements that I wanted to show you all as well, because uh, number one, this is, uh, you know, the CEO of Anthropic talking about his percentage of doom and basically stating that, you know, the percentage is not zero. And as these models become increasingly more capable, they become harder to predict and harder to control. And later on, after this statement, I'm going to show you um, a statement from someone at OpenAI's team talking about, you know, the future AI systems and what they think they're capable of. Do you think about percentage chance doom? I think I've often said that my chance that something goes, you know, really quite catastrophically wrong on the scale of, of you know, human civilization, you know, it might be somewhere between 10 and 25 percent when you put together the risk of something going wrong with the model itself with, you know, something going wrong with human, you know, people or organizations or nation states misusing the model or or it kind of inducing conflict among them or or just some way in which kind of society can't can't handle it. That that said, I mean, you know, what that means is that there's a 75 to 90 percent chance uh, that this technology is developed and, 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 and everything goes fine. In fact, I think if everything goes fine, it'll go not just fine, it'll go really, really great. Um, again, this stuff about curing cancer, I think if, if we can avoid the downsides, then this stuff about, you know, about curing cancer, extending the human lifespan, um, you know, solving problems like, like mental illness. I mean, I, this all, this all sounds utopian, but I don't think it's outside the scope of what the technology can do. So, you know, I, I, I often try to focus on the 75 to 90% chance where things will go right. And I think one of the big motivators for reducing that 10 to 25% chance is, you know, how, how great it'll, <laughs> you know, is trying to increase, is trying to increase the good part of the pie. Um, and I think the only reason why I spend so much time thinking about the 10, that, that 10 to 25% chance 
is, hey, it's not going to solve itself. So this is uh, important because if you don't know, Dario Amode is the CEO of Anthropic. And not only is the CEO of Anthropic, but he left OpenAI to focus on safety. So these are some really, really smart people. They've managed to do something great with Claude 3. And I think their companies, uh, you know, their, their ethos, their values, their constitutional AI, the way how it works, I think it's really, really important in terms of, you know, developing things in a different way. Because, you know, like he said, someone has to be focused on safety. The percentage isn't going to get sold by itself. And it's something that they do need to work on. And of course, as well, you know, OpenAI are also focusing on super alignment. They have a team which is focusing on this led by Jan Like. So essentially, there was a podcast in which Jan Like actually talks about his percentage of doom. And he actually talks about, you know, GPT-5, GPT-6, what they're looking for, for for those systems and how they plan to solve the alignment problems in those systems. Don't obsess about whether you can align GPT-20. Uh, let's work on aligning GPT-5. And then in collaboration with GPT-5, we'll figure out how to align GPT-6. Uh, and then in collaboration with all of them, uh, we'll work together to align GPT-7. That's, that's, uh, that's kind, of, kind of the basic idea. <laughs> Yeah, or like, you know, and like you want to do this empirically, like maybe you look at GPT-5 and you're like, well, the system isn't still isn't smart enough, right? Like, so we tried this a whole bunch with GPT-4, like trying to help get it, like fine tune it on alignment data, try to get a help in our research. It just wasn't that useful. Yeah. That could happen with GPT-5 too. But then we'll be like, okay, let's focus on GPT-6. But like, you know, we want to be on the ball when this is happening and we want to be there, you know, when it's becomes possible and then like really go for it. And so I think that's the much more important question to focus on. And then if you actually wanted to give a like a probability of doom, like I think the reason why it's so hard is like because there's so many different scenarios of how the future could go and like if you want to have an accurate probability, you need to like integrate over this large space. And like, I, I don't think that's fundamentally helpful. I think what's important is like, how much can we make things better? And like, what are the best paths to do this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't spend a lot of time trying to precisely pin down my, my personal P doom. Cause I, I suppose I feel my, my guess is that it's more than 10%, less than 90%. So it's incredibly important that we work to, to lower that number, but it's not so high that we're completely, completely screwed and that there's, and, and there's no hope. And kind of within that range, it doesn't seem like it's going to affect my, my decisions on a day to day basis all that much. So I'm just kind of happy, happy to leave it there. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably the range I would give to. So yeah, that's where they talk about uh, P Doom on a podcast with Jan Like. It's actually a really, really insightful podcast. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's around two hours, but it is something that is honestly a fascinating uh, insight into what's going on at OpenAI in terms of aligning these superhuman systems. So what are your opinions on Elon Musk's full statement? Do you think that we're going to be getting AGI by 2025? Do you think this is just a bold claim? Do you also agree with the industry standards that we're going to be basically getting AGI by 2028 slash 2029? Do you also agree that compute is increasing, you know, at a unprecedented speed and what is your percentage doom how large do you think the percentage is that super intelligent ai you know is out of control and has some catastrophe level effect on humanity so uh, let me know what you think about that if you did enjoy the video don't leave a comment below and i'll see you guys in the next one